attack global monopolies. Right now, each country worries about the monopolies within its own boundaries. It doesn't look, care about what happens outside its boundaries. In fact, the United States doesn't, uh, American firms do better if they can make monopoly profits abroad, so long as they don't exploit American consumers. Europe had a very major dispute with the United States over the a merger of Honeywell and GE. Europe rightly took the view that that merger would create monopoly power. They assessed that and they said, no, you can't go ahead unless you do certain divesting. The United States said, that's interfering with market forces. Because for their point of view, they were seeing more profits for these American companies. And who cares about European consumers? With global monopolies, it may become very difficult to detect. And so while each country focusing on its own consumers, it becomes increasingly difficult to see what is going on. There have been some very serious cases of global cartels in recent years uh, and uh, illustrating both how difficult it is to detect and, and how, they, uh, how big they can become, how they can affect people all over the world. There was one involving, for instance, vitamins. So we need a global competition authority to, to regulate competition. Another thing that we need is to change liability laws. Yes, limited liability is important, but limited liability is a social, is a, is a, is a social innovation that you have to look at the costs and benefits. There should be no limited liability when you destroy the environment, when you kill people. And individuals should not be able to hide behind the corporation. They should not be able to go across the border in order to get protection. So we have to recognize that today we live in a global economy and our legal protections need to adapt to this new global economy that we live in. Unfortunately, so far they haven't. Thomas Friedman has written a very influential book called The World is Flat. He is right that the topography, the geography has changed enormously. The nature of competition in the global economy today is different from what it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. China, India, other countries in East Asia are, are presenting a form of competition to Europe, the United States, that they've never had before. And this is changing the global economic landscape. But it's wrong to say that the world is flat, and in some ways the world is actually becoming less flat. In this new economy, and the new world that we live in, to succeed, to win, you have to have knowledge. You have to have technology. And those with resources have access to that knowledge, have access to technology, have the ability to advance technology and those resources and, the, and, and that knowledge. Those in the poorest countries of the world do not have the resources, do not have the access to knowledge, they're falling behind. So the gap between the advanced industrial countries and the poorest countries is actually growing. The gap between those within the advanced industrial countries that have the resources and ability to learn and those that don't is growing. There are other changes that are making the world less flat. Never before have we've had global monopolies, global market power on the scale that we have today. Industries that are vital to the new economy, controlled by one or two firms, able to exercise their monopoly power, threatening that if they're attacked, they will leave the country, and leaving the country, leave it in a lurch, unable to connect with the rest of the world and to deal with the rest of the world. The very fact that a company could exercise, to, could 
could issue that threat shows its market power. In a competitive economy, if you say, I'm going to leave, you say, so what? There are lots of other companies that can come in. But in a world of monopoly, if you threaten to leave, it has disastrous consequences. International trade agreements, too, have made the world less flat. I described before how the poorest countries have actually been made worse off, even though the advanced industrial countries, Europe and the United States, have done very well. So again, the gap has been increasing. So globalization is changing the nature of global competition, but it's changing it in very complex ways, in ways that will necessitate adjustments both in the part of developing countries and developed countries. I believe that we can make a world that is actually flatter, fairer, I think if we do it, we can have a win-win. Globalization was supposed to bring untold benefits to everybody. And that was based on a hypothesis that it could be a win-win. It wasn't a zero-sum. In a zero-sum world, the gains of one are at the expense of the other. But when you have the rules right, everybody can benefit. The gains of the of the developing countries, their increase in the income can help reinforce the gains in the developed countries, and vice versa. That's the kind of world that we ought to be working towards. And I believe that if we reform globalization, we can make globalization work, work in ways that will benefit both the developed and the less developed countries, both the poor and the rich, in both the developing and the developed world.